Oh my god. Has it actually been a full week? <laughs> no, no. It's just been like two minutes. For me anyway. For you, it's been a whole week. But now we're talking about the actual 3080 Ti 12 gig. This is again GA102, but instead of 320-bit, we're talking 384-bit, which is shared with the 3090 and the 3090 Ti. 3090 we'll look at soon. I don't own a 3090 Ti. If you happen to have one and have a PMD and are willing to let me mess around with it remotely, please let me know. But anyway, I digress. We're going to get into this 12 gig beast. This thing was originally ridiculed for its insanely high MSRP of $1,199 and its built-in LHR or light hash rate featuring. Uh, all that has since been stripped out of NVIDIA's driver and I did not pay nearly that much for this card. I think I paid $500 for this back quite a while ago, but nevertheless, let's look at the 3080 Ti because these are still viable cards these days, absolutely and get right into it. So Flux, almost the same performance as the regular 3080 as far as hash rate, but the efficiency is better. So my speculation there is when you're powering a big piece of silicon like GA102, the more unlocked it is, the better, because you can work the higher number of compute units a little less hard, and that same power envelope is just going a longer way, which is why we find that the 3090 is honestly usually the most efficient. 3090 Ti probably would be too, but I don't have one. So we'll see 0 0.510 is actually pretty good efficiency, and 100 souls is ridiculous. So very, very good. Next, uh, I'm still going to call this good 0.548 efficiency is even better than the 3080 10 gig. Uh, hash rate, almost exactly the same though so i'm not really sure what's going on there dynax hash rate is almost a full kilo hash higher than it is on the 3080 10 gig kind of incredible same efficiency though 47 i think we were dealing with 45 or 48 on the 3080 10 gig so very comparable in efficiency just you know this one packs quite a bit more of a punch because of that memory bus kyla coin again i really just don't have enough data on that this one's only included basically out of community requests so there are the numbers uh right here you can see exactly what we're working with as far as hash rates and efficiencies. PMD wattage, again, on the right, that's a hardware intercepted power measurement. And then software, of course, is always here on the left. So you can see how much the card is lying or how close it is. Alephium, much better on hash rate. So 2.4 giga hash is really good. And 17, again, is where we consider the, uh, the good line for efficiency. This is at 14. So we did take a little bit of a hit on efficiency, even though the, it packs, like I said, way more of a punch. Ironfish better and the efficiency is more in line with alephium on this card whereas the 3080 10 gig we saw that it did better on alephium efficiency wise and not as good on ironfish so they're largely the same hash algorithm but they are slightly different so worth paying attention to radiant hash rate was really disappointing but the efficiency was good so i guess if you really love the project it's still not a terrible play it's just not good for density ergo tremendous 236 mega hash and 1.75 mega hash per watt so very very impressed with this card i will say that the founders edition memory bins i've gotten really lucky on these being able to go up to 2898 without even a flinch uh, a lot of aib cards really are kind of capping out between 2200 and 2600 so keep that in mind if you have one that's being a little bit uh unreasonable with your overclocks etc hash again really great these were known especially after the unlocker for being tremendous a little bit worse efficiency than the 10 gig 3080, but a little bit better hash rate because we're dealing with a wider bus. So 114.8 mega hash and our efficiency was 0.422. So not bad. Pigeon coin, again, really bad. I don't know why Ampere J102, just not good at pigeon coin, but it is not. So that's one case where I'd recommend Ada or maybe even Turing over these cards. Uh, if you're really going to hit pigeon hard. Kapow, look at this, man point sorry 59.36 mega hash and that was actually our best efficiency running that too so we got 0 0.171 and this was g minor uh so we did really well actually by lowering actually no, we increased sorry don't don't pay attention to this last result that is uh, red fox's result which was software i talked to him and his 3080 ti over reports like crazy so ignore that result uh let's look for our best one here which is 0.166 at 52.58. So this result right here, sorry. Um, I did add a couple of results in from other YouTubers just as I saw it. I'm like, whoa, that's way better than my result. What happened? It's because it's drawing way more power. So the most efficient is actually with yeah lower memory, lower core clock, everything like that. So 52.58 mega hash at looks like 316 watts. So again, this cooler just can't handle it, but still, you know, a decent Kapow card. 
I'm not going to say 166 efficiency is worth it, so probably stick to something else. Uh, Cortex, really good efficiency. Don't know if the hash rate's good or not. And Conflux, not quite as impressive a showing as the 3080 10GB, um, but hash rates were still really good. So 3080 Ti, is it worth the extra money over a 3080? I would say probably not. If these are $500 and 3080s are $350, no way. But if there's a $50 Golf, in my opinion, it's probably worth it, just because you're, you're getting two additional gigs of VRAM, so they're going to be better if you ever need to rent them out for compute. Uh, and that, that memory bus is a lot girthier. And these are just a really cut down 3090, whereas the 3080 is kind of its own beast. So anyway, that is the result for the actual 3080 Ti. Thank you as always for watching. I will catch you guys with another card next week, even though I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be just yet. Peace. You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job, whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result.